relax. I just needed that. This cup and saucer, it's actually um, it's been gifted to me from my, well, from my mum, I guess, and her sisters. Uh, my nan passed just very recently and they were insistent that I have a little something from my property as we're clearing it. And this cup and saucer, I actually bought for my nan. Oh, I don't really see it very well. There we go. I bought it for my nan a couple of years ago now. It's a Laura Ashley set. And my nan would only ever drink out of a cup and saucer. She insisted on it. There was nothing else. Um, and out of all of the sets, this is the one that she always used. So the sisters decided to gift it back to me. So I'm having a cup of coffee. It's half term week um, and you will have hopefully by now watched um, at least the first video for this so along. Um, I've had a few messages already, which is really, really nice. Uh, do stay in touch with me. I'm here at the end of the line to help you wherever I can. And anybody new coming to this, if you want to know a bit more information or you want to know where to get the pattern or anything like that, just just send me a message. It's absolutely fine. And uh, we'll see what we can do to get you on the way. It's half term, so it's also no makeup week. Um, so I was a little bit thinking, should I put makeup on? I always put makeup on for videos. But um, I'm trying a new skincare routine as well because my skin's not been great recently. Uh, so I'm working with a, a new product called Neil's Yard, which is like it's an organic range. Um, and I'm loving it. So I'm just enjoying the feeling of the products on my face and nothing else right now. If you want to know more about how I'm getting on with Neil's Yard, again, just drop a message below and I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm using. Um, but what I can tell you is that basically anything that I'm using at the minute has got frankincense in it. And do you know something? Even if it didn't work, I'd still use it because I flipping love the smell. It's so nice. Anyway, you're not here for all of that. We're going to carry on with this, um, this dress. So bear with. So hopefully by now you'll have to put all the top together. And what I'm really working on today is getting those cuffs in. Um, I'm not sure how far we'll get today, uh, but but that's all part of the excitement, isn't it? It's not a race. It doesn't absolutely matter at all um, how long this takes you. Um, and I want to give you this in bite-sized chunks. But effectively, just to remind you, we've got the cuffs to go in <clears throat> and we've got the two tiers of the skirt to go in. And then, of course, like I said, I wanted to do another video um, just using the overlocker to make my adapted top version, which I'm quite excited about making. I can't I can't lie to you. So, yeah, all about the cuffs today. So what we're going to do is you've got your two cuff pieces cut out like so two rectangles. And the process is the same regardless of whether you're doing the long sleeves or the short. To remind you, I'm doing the short on this occasion. The pieces might be slightly different sizes, but all in all, it's exactly the same. And all you're going to do is fold it over so it's short edge to short edge like so. And you're going to do a stitch straight down there. Way. Just now, do that narrow zigzag stitch just straight down there. And then if I were you, I would press those seams open. So I'm just going to go do that and then I'll be straight back. So I've done that. And that's all been pressed open and flat. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one edge, like so, and I'm going to fold it over. So all those wrong edges, wrong sides are going together like so, until the two edges meet just there. And then you're going to flip that around and just wiggle it about until all of those raw edges meet at the top. And that is our cuff piece all ready to now use. If you want to put a few pins in to keep it secure, do that. What I like to do is just give that a quick press at this point. So I've got a nice little crease mark. And then you can just put that to one side and then we're going to move to the sleeves. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our top and this is one of the sleeves. So I'm just going to hold the sleeve now and leave everything hanging below me. The full circumference of this sleeve needs to be gathered in so it is becomes as wide as <coughs> the width or the circumference of that cuff piece that we've just made. The way we're going to make that happen is we're going to take this to our sewing machine. We're going to set the machine to a straight stitch and put it onto the longest stitch you can. Mine's setting number five. Now, remember your seam allowance is one centimetre. That's going to be our final stitch line. What I want you to do is within that one centimetre, so this little distance here, we're going to do two parallel rows of stitching all the way around the sleeve. Let me show you how. 
So I'm at my machine and I've set my stitch so it is a straight stitch, straight regular stitch and it's at a number five. I'm sliding my fabric, the cuff end, underneath the foot of the fabric and I'm going to start about one centimetre in from that seam line join. I'm going to use the edge of my foot as a guide. Now when I turn my machine on, this, the needle position is central which means that it's at one centimetre. So I need this to be within one centimetre. So I'm going to press my button to make my needle go right. There we go. Only a little bit, but that's how we do it. And now I'm going to take this all the way around the circumference of the sleeve piece. I've actually got quite close there, I can't, I can't lie. <laughs> And I'm going to leave long tails because we need those for gathering. I'm now going to go back in at that starting position and I'm now going to move my needle position further right. So again, within that one centimetre and you're going to work your way around. Do your absolute best to make sure the stitches don't cross. leave your tails and that's one done now repeat on the other so you'll now see that you've got your cuff piece just here and this cuff of the sleeve just here and it's already started to pull things in but all you now need to do is take your tails and start pulling them and gathering them inwards until they become the size of your cuff piece so that's what we'll do So I'm just going to work with my bobbin threads, which are on the underside, pulling those two together. When I can get them, and I'll start pulling and working those gathers in like so until they fit. Take it slow and steady. As I mentioned when we did the shoulders, don't worry if you do break a thread. <coughs> That's why we do two, so you've got a bit of backup. Mine's catching because I went off just there. So I just got to gently work that through. Don't think it's going to go. So instead, I'm going to go to the other side and see if I can save my soul over here. And just start working it around again. So I've started the gathering process of the cuff piece here and there is my cuff like I mentioned. Now I haven't done all of the gathering that was required um, just because I was having a few problems in just doing some of the pulling. I don't know why but it seemed to get caught in a couple of places. So I'm going to minute belate that in but that's easy enough to do now that the main bit of this is already done. So we've got our raw edges of our cuff piece just here and my top is inside out. My seam line is down here my seam line is at the same end. We're now going to post this inside the sleeve end and we're going to match up our seam lines at the end and we're going to pin to secure in place. Now going to go to the opposite end of the cuff piece and I'm going to secure that in place. I'm going to try and pin from the inside as well. And now it's a case of making all of this meet. Now, if you've been able to do your gathering properly, it's going to sit beautifully, but I'm going to need to manipulate mine just a little bit. So I'm just going to let that bit just go. That's absolutely fine. And I'm going to pin. And I will try and show you how I do this as best I can. This bit's nicely gathered just here. So I'm going to let that all go. That's absolutely fine. And I shall pin from the inside. 
So now I've just got this little bit here that I feel didn't gather quite enough. What I could do is I'm going to have a little go at snipping the thread halfway and then grabbing the thread and I'm just going to see if I can pull it. I can. So that's half of it in beautifully and I'll pin it. And then on the other thread end, I'm going to try and grab that one now. It's only a tiny little end, but I'm just going to have a go at pulling that as well. Might not have as much luck here, but it's worth a go. There we go. Just gave me enough to pull that in place. And then I can just pin it. And I'm going to repeat on the other side. And then we'll take it to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch from the inside at a one centimetre seam allowance. So my machine's being reset now and I've just popped it onto a straight stitch. I think that should be fine. And I'm working from the inside of the garment and I'm looking at the cuff piece here. And I'm just going to slow and steadily work around one centimetre seam allowance. I have switched back to my complementing thread now. half of it <laughs> that was nice but look we did it we got our little cups in Woo! now i mean i'm gonna be honest i don't have any problems with gathering but for some reason the gods were against me when, when i was doing mine but i think it's really helpful that actually you did see me struggle i don't want to take away from the fact that this was not a hard process it was definitely just about a me thing it was about it being a rainy day and all of those things it just happens sometimes doesn't it it, it shouldn't have been that hard and that's why I'm going to stop today. The reason why I'm going to stop today, two reasons. One, that process alone is going to take you longer than you think. It's such a tiny, tiny little detail, but there's no race in this. Let, let's not just bomb ahead just because we can. And I'm going to give some close up details in a minute. But the second reason is um, the tiers that we're going to do on this for the skirt are very much the same. Now, bear in mind the gods are against me getting those in. I'm going to have to guess that it's going to be against me getting those in. So that can definitely wait for another day. So let's just enjoy those little wins that we've had for today and just appreciate those beautiful little gathers. So what you had to see was obviously how to build in those gathers when the stitching fails on you. I mean, you're not going to have that problem. It was just definitely a me thing. Um, and what to do. Now, the only thing I didn't show you is that you know you would now you've obviously got all this inside you're going to press it upwards towards the sleeve to, to tidy things up a little bit without taking out those beautiful little pleats that you've created the other thing you can do is an optional extra and it doesn't mention it in the instructions if you want to you can go in and you can start pulling out those gather stitches if you want to if you have that amount of time available in your day please let me know and i'm going to send you my to-do list um because i don't have that kind of day in my life time in my life to, to do that um but there we go anyway enjoy week two of the sew along get those cuffs in start reading ahead for your um two tier pieces now wind up your bobbin you're gonna need a lot of thread in the next stage 
Um, but in the meantime, have a great week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.